Welcome back, it's Dr. Jen Fabroni, better known as Dr. Jen Fit, and we're gonna go over bridges because even though they seem like a very basic exercise and it's often prescribed in physical therapy, I can't tell you how many times I've done workouts with friends where they're like, oh yeah, my quads are burning, and I'm like, what? <laughs> bridges are for your glutes. So if your quads are burning, something is happening that we don't want to happen, right? So all I'm gonna do is give you some quick tips and little shifts that you can make within your form so that you can completely feel something different. It doesn't take much. I'm, I'm gonna just have my mat. I'm not gonna bring in any tools or crazy things. We're just gonna go over some tips and cues and I want you to let me know below in the comments. I want you to try it with me as we're going through it and let me know what you're feeling because it's good feedback for me, right? I can just tell you through a screen but I don't know what you're actually feeling unless you give me feedback. So please drop your feedback below as we're going through. And don't forget, please like this because it's gonna start showing up more often so that you get better cues and tips into your body so you don't feel things like back pain in bridges because that's the other thing. The other thing that I hear a lot is back pain. I lift too high, I'm really trying to get that glute activation, I'm pressing through my heels. So let's go into what could be happening. Now, what I see happen a lot when you go into a bridge position is that people wanna get as high as possible, right? So I'm gonna lift, 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 as high as possible, really trying to get that glute activation. But what I'm doing here is one, I'm pressing through my hands to try to get it. So I'm actually getting a little bit of a tricep workout, maybe a, even a little bit into my chest here, but I'm also just going up into my back. So I'm making these extensors have to work. They have to assist, they're doing their job. That's what you're doing by getting as high as possible. And then if I try to just dig into my heels to try to feel it, that might not do anything. Our foot, and especially when we're doing a bridge, the whole purpose is that we're translating this to how we want to move better functionally, right? And functionally means standing. So I'm not gonna be on my heels standing <laughs> if I'm squatting down and picking something up. I wanna be in my full feet. So I want that in your bridge as well. So you're actually going to not have your heels too close to your bum. That is one reason why you're gonna to put too much tension onto your quads. If your heels are too close, you're going to be more quad dominant. If your heels are too far, you might not even get into your, your you're gonna probably feel your hamstrings a lot because your feet are trying to pull and hold you in, but still you might be getting into this back here. Okay, so we kind of have to just find a happy medium and sometimes that's just placing your feet down. Not even trying to think, okay, can I, uh, one of the, the, the cues that really kind of bothers me, I gotta say it, let me know if this is something that you've been told to do, is touch your heels. Can you touch your heels? If I can touch my heels here, I'm way too close and I'm gonna get into my quads and especially if I have really tight quads, that is the first thing that's gonna grab on, not my glutes, okay? so you shouldn't need to touch. Maybe you do, maybe you have really long arms. We have different body structures, so that's why I don't like single cues like that for every body. We have different arm lengths, different trunk lengths, different leg lengths, like, so let your legs feel comfortable. You don't want them too far now, okay? So we don't want them too far outside of the hips. We want it to be pretty neutral. That means that if I look, I'm almost like a little bit wider than a fist width apart. I'm not too wide and I'm not too close, okay? So I'm about a fist width apart and my feet are pretty dang just comfortable. Toes facing forward as much as possible. Again, if it feels like you're turning your feet in, then you can have a little bit of an external rotation. That's your legs, okay? That's where you are. Now to take the trunk and the chest out of the picture, I actually like to turn the palms up, okay? So you're gonna actually open the chest. Now this is going to say, okay, I'm not gonna work up here at all. I'm not gonna cheat and push and round in my shoulders. I'm gonna open and allow my body to do the lower body, which is what I'm focusing on here, to do the work, right? So as I press, I want to feel heels, ball of the feet, and big toes. Heels, ball of the foot, big toe. This is all gonna kind of grab, so kind of grab the ground. Already I start to feel hamstrings turn on. So heels, ball of the foot, big toe, kind of grab into the floor. It's not, it's not like, a, like a 
towel crunch or anything. It's just a gentle little activation of those feet. Now I'm grounding into my feet. I'm getting functional into carry over into squats, opening into my chest. Now when I lift, let's take a breath in, open that rib cage, take a breath out, drop that rib cage toward that pelvis. Okay, try to think of flattening here. So I'm not rounding, I'm not pushing my spine down. I'm not trying to lift up here into my abdominals. I'm trying to keep it all flat. So again, breath in from that rib cage, breath out, just drop it down. Flatten, flatten, flatten. Trying to think of just everything kind of compressing in, okay? Now I can still breathe here. Everything is compressed in, but I can still breathe and talk but I'm just holding a little bit more tension here. What this is gonna do is gonna help to align my rib cage and my pelvis. This is where I wanna stay, and I don't want this to come out, okay? So now, as I lift with my arms open, I'm going to lift my rib cage, keep my rib cage down toward that pelvis still, and I wanna think of taking that tailbone and tucking it underneath me, almost like I'm taking these sit bones that go into my glutes here, and I'm going to round them toward my legs, okay? So pulling it under, I'm still gripping into the floor, I'm keeping that rib cage down, and everything is tight and compressed. Now it's not about how high I can lift. I can still go higher, sure, but it's not about being the highest, right? because now my rib cage is gonna to start to go, my back is gonna to have to work. Now I'm losing the activation into my glutes. So again, drop that rib cage, tuck under, don't worry about getting too high, keep that activation with the feet, and now hold it here, okay? Activation in my feet still strong, I'm feeling my hamstrings, I'm rotating through that pelvis as tight as possible. So pull those hip bones up toward that rib cage, pull, 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 even more, even more. Squeeze those glutes. Now, if you're not feeling your glutes working, <laughs> we might need to lower just a little bit more, take that back out of the equation even more, and then pull. Pull those heels toward the bottom, squeeze here, tuck, tuck, tuck. The more you tuck, the more you're gonna get that activation into those glutes and then come down. Whew, already just from like 30 seconds, I felt my glutes firing, okay? So that's gonna help to take that tension out of those quads, out of the back. Now, if you start to hold this here and you're like, one minute is starting to feel easy, an easiest way to bump this exercise up is do a single leg. Okay, take one leg out of the picture and just hold. Now again, I'm thinking as I'm up in this position, I am dropping that rib cage and I'm tucking that tailbone up. I don't wanna drop my hips, I want them even and I wanna tuck under, tuck under, tuck under, tuck under. Feel my heel ball of the foot, big toe. <sighs> Woo, the more I tuck, the more I tuck, the more I feel it. Oh, and let it go. There's no specific number of reps that you have to do, okay? But as you're kind of moving into this, feel, can I hold it for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute if you really wanna challenge yourself, and then only do it about three times, five times, 10 times if you want to. You can use it as an activation, you can use it as a warm up so that you get that body okay, feel my feet, feel my glutes, make sure my core knows how to turn on, and then you're ready for your workout. Or maybe you have this as your workout. As long as you're starting to get that activation, that awareness into your body. How do I take pressure off of my quads? How do I take pressure off of my back? Where do I need to put my feet? Again, there's no one perfect position. Play around with it, see what changes, see what it feels like to keep those arms open, keep that rib cage down, use that breath to create that intra-abdominal pressure and feel something different. That's what I do with all of my workouts. I just wanna guide you, cue you into your own body so that you can start to feel something different. And I'm telling you, the more that you start to move with me, get into my workouts, get into the Optimal Body membership and just start to explore your body, you're gonna be amazed what difference you can start to feel. Comment below, again, if you felt any difference, if you noticed something change, I wanna hear from you. If you love what you're learning, don't forget there's so much more that I have in store. So hit that subscribe button, check out the other videos so that you don't miss anything and you continue to learn and feel amazing within your body.